Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so hi everyone again. Uh, today is the day that we release the next major version of Proldium. We have a lot of exciting updates and we want to share them with you in this stream. My name is Selena. I'm a developer advocate for Proldium. And also here with me, you can see two more people. So one is Thomas. Thomas, do you want to introduce yourself? That's good. Uh, I'm just Thomas. I'm a uh, Proldium project lead. And, <laughs> just uh, Thomas. Yeah, Fabio. Uh, uh, very modest. <laughs> I'm Fabio. Um, yeah, it's good to see so many familiar faces in the YouTube channel. It's crazy. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the release. Uh, how do we want to do this? We have a lot of exciting updates. So this time we actually brought slides. Uh, so let me share these slides one sec. Okay, this should be good to go. Don't get scared. This is our streaming setup. And these are our slides. So this should look good, fine, right? Yes. Yeah, let's go. So welcome to the new release of GrowVM. And we have a number of the updates in this release. And the first, the most interesting, exciting that we want to share is our new GrowVM distribution, which is called Oracle GrowVM. So this is the big news. And we didn't, this is the first new distribution that we held in a few years, I think, right? So uh, it's very exciting. And what makes this distribution different is the following. So it's a new version of GrowVM that you can use for free in development and production included. And it comes with a lot of exciting features that we will take a look at in a second. And also it's licensed under a new GrowVM free terms and conditions license. And it has a lot of exciting things in it. So let's go straight to the features. OK, so what's new in this release? And here we will focus specifically on what's new and available now in native image, since we assume many of you are here to listen to native image updates. So what's new and great and available now for native image in Oracle Grow VM? Uh, so one thing that you can use now with this Oracle Grow distribution is profile guided optimizations. And even more compiler optimizations. So this means that in this release, you can get even more performance for native image, including big performance. So um, that's very cool, I think. What do you think, Thomas and Fabio? Yeah, so, so this, is, this is a milestone here in the sense that uh, with this release now, all these great performance optimizations that uh, bring higher throughput and that bring the throughput of uh, native image to the same level as JIT compilation, they are now available to you in this new Oracle Gravium distribution. And um, yeah, the second point here is also super important uh, because previously we only had one uh, compiler of choice um, for the Gravium Community Edition. And now uh, there is also a second, um, like a second garbage collector now available, which is the Chibon garbage collector. And this means now you can finally um, run native image also in configurations where you need uh, large heaps. Great, thank you. And talking about performance even more, so what's also great now is that you can get even lower memory footprint. It was native binaries that you build with Oracle GrowVM because that will be using compressed object headers and pointers. And uh, one more item here, so you know, machine learning is a very hot topic right now, and everyone is doing some cool stuff with machine learning. So we are also uh, on this trend. And in this release, we have a new feature that is using machine learning to help figure out profile information for your executable so it can have even more big performance out of the box. Hang on, Alina. Uh, I'm not sure this is like, a, we're following just the trend. I think this is super useful uh, for users because so far, like PGO was always a bit inconvenient to use right and even though if you have to use it and if you want to use it um there's some additional work that needs to be done but as we'll see later on like we are now enabling pgo uh, to some extent at least through machine learning without the user having to do anything right so that's that's quite useful i think and makes it easier to use pgo in the first place sorry for interrupting no, no, no. <laughs> Great point, and it's indeed very helpful. Uh, I just want to say that you know, like we are doing all the cool stuff as well. 
but uh, yeah, it's also very helpful and very practical. And uh, the last item on this list, so security is also very important. So now we get additional security layer because now we also get SBOM, so software build material available in native image as well. So I assume you might have a lot of questions about all of this. So if you have any, just drop them in the chat and we will be happy to answer all the questions that you have about this release either now or later on. Uh, let me see, but I don't think we have any questions yet. We do see a comment that this is huge. <laughs> we think so too, thank you. <laughs> Well, did we did we talk about the JDK versions and the, and the updated version scheme yet? Uh, we will get to that in a second. Okay. We just want to start with the super exciting native image features. Yeah, no, let's uh, let's go. Let's 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 move on in the presentation. Yeah, let's move on. And if you have questions, just ask. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll point. see them on the flights. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on then. Uh, so what we want to talk about here is, you know, we talked about all those features and how they can help you get better performance for your applications. And now we want to illustrate it with some practical example and talk about how running on Oracle Raw VM native image compares to running on JIT. So we did a bunch of measurements uh, on the example of Spring Pet Clinic, as that's a standard pretty much application for benchmarking Spring applications. So we did a bunch of measurements on Raw VM native image CE in this release, so community edition on Oracle Raw VM native image with PGO and G1. So those features that we mentioned before that are now available, and we compare them against running on Raw VM community edition uh, JIT. So in JIT mode with C2 JIT. And C2 is the top tier optimizing compiler that you get by default on Hotspot VM. So this is our setup. And here are the number of things that we measured. This is a summary, but uh, I think it will be more interesting to just talk about each of those performance aspects separately. So let's take a look at them. Yeah, so so first, yeah, so first is the startup uh, thing where like native image, like it's already kind of known to really be really good at startup. So it's no surprise that native image ahead of time compilation is good here. Now, also we're very good with this new release that's now available under the Oracle Gradium distribution. You can get the startup even down further. So in our example here uh, for Spring Pet Clinic, startup goes from seven seconds to um, 410 milliseconds with, with the previous version of Gradium. And now with Oracle Graviam, it goes down to even 22 milliseconds only. But that's kind of that's kind of the, the thing where like people are already using native image wherever startup is important because it, it just gives the great numbers. And uh, but yeah, so 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 let's also look at the other other metrics, right? Yeah, so this was startup, and let's also talk about memory footprint, uh, because I would personally argue that this might be equally important than startup, or maybe even more important, because maybe you have a more long-running applications that doesn't start that often. So startup is great, but what if you care about more about memory you're using? So maybe you're deploying your application to the cloud, and you want to make sure that you can reduce the, num the amount of memory that it's using. So here you can see that Oracle Graal VM native image, again, with PGO and G1 is using, I would say here it's three times less memory than running on the JVM because it doesn't have to do all of that code, compilation, interpreting, profiling, et cetera, at runtime. It all has been done when you were building your application as a native executable, and it's using even less memory than native image in Graal VM community edition. Yeah, so, so the, the memory advantage, of course, in any cloud setup is super important. And uh, it allows you to run on smaller cloud instances. It allows you to run uh, cheaper. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we see here, even with Gravium, the previous Gravium version, it was already really great. Again, we are pushing with this release the envelope a little bit further uh, with another you know, 30%, 25-30% lower memory footprint. Um, that uh, that will lead to 25-30% lower cost uh, in your cloud environment. Thanks. And now let's talk about peak throughput because this is always uh, something interesting to look at. And here you can see that peak throughput that you can get with native image with, again, PGO G1 is higher than on community edition. It's higher, I would say, by 40%. So again, on native image, in addition to fast startup, low memory footprint, you can also get peak throughput that is way higher now. Uh, specifically on this application that we are measuring here, so this is Pet Clinic. You can see here that it's still a bit behind 
the C2 jet here. But I want to add here that in other benchmarks and in other measurements that we are doing on other Spring apps, but also Micronaut and Quarkus, in many times we can see that IoT, so native image, is actually ahead of JIT in terms of peak throughput. So this depends on the actual application as well. Yeah, so, so the throughput here you know, increased like dramatically uh, from 6,000 ops per second to 10,000 now. Um, we have further optimizations in the pipeline. So we, we really think that, that ultimately our ahead of time compiled version is going to be uh, faster on, three, uh, on peak throughput than, than here, even the C2 chip version. But uh, just in this release, uh, we, are, we are on Pat Clinic very, very close. And, uh, and on other benchmarks even ahead. And, but in the end, uh, the question is always, what do you get for this? For this um, like, how much do you need to spend to achieve this peak throughput? And uh, yeah, that's why we think this, this metric uh, that's important for your deployments is actually not just the peak throughput. It's like, how much throughput can you get uh, when you spend one second of compute and use one gigabyte of memory? And uh, in such a setup, if you now uh, basically divide the throughput number by the amount of memory used, uh, you can see how the gravity native image, which is the rightmost uh, bar here, is more than two times, it, like gives you a more than two times advantage in terms of requests that are served per gigabyte second. Uh, so this is a very substantial, uh, almost order of magnitude advantage you have when you are deploying here um, with native image your spring application because of the uh, much lower memory while having a comparable throughput. I think it's also very interesting here how both native image and community edition and uh, the JIT mode here are comparable, right? In terms of how much throughput you can get per resources you have. But native image with uh, PGO Jovan from Oracle Grow VM is was three times higher, like four times, uh, two, two times, sorry. So significantly more performance that you can get from the resources you have than either native image in CE or JET. Okay, and the last matter that we want to show for this application is latency. So here you can see a latency distributions of application running on Oracle Grow VM native image and on the JIT. And the gray line here, that is JIT, and the blue one, that is Oracle Grow VM native image. And you can see that for a long time, they go on par. So latency stays, I would say, below three milliseconds for both JIT and native image. But then on higher percentiles for JIT, it starts to degrade quite fast, while on native image, it stays low and lower than on JIT. So this means that your application can be equally responsive or even more responsive on native image than it will be on JIT. Yeah, this is this is the big thing with this new option that you have now on garbage collection, where you have now the G1 garbage collector available. Uh, and, and, and we all know that the G1 gives great performance. It's the standard uh, garbage collector also on hotspot uh, GVM. And uh, with this Oracle Gravium release, you have now on native image the G1 garbage collector available, which was you know optimized over many many years. I think it was first released in Java nine, um, and um, so so this is this is like really big news on on the side of when you want to uh, run a long running application with a larger heap size, and you care about tail latency. Uh, in such a setup, G1 is just better than the, the current uh, serial garbage collector that we also have available in native image. And uh, it gives you here, compared to the serial garbage collector native image, an order of magnitude improvement and an even better here uh, tail latency than on the cheat side. Okay, and to make this a bit more interactive, I think you also have some demos and Fabio is already ready to show them. So uh, we want to show uh, performance on the actual Spring app, the things that we measured right now before the stream. Uh, so Fabio, you can take over. Yeah, should, we, should we handle some of the questions first? Yeah, yeah. so so Fabio, you can you can kind of get set up with the screen and we will, um, we okay. will handle some of the questions. So is the PGO also a part of the Gradle plugin? So for using PGO, you, you have to like build an image and you have to specify uh, minus minus PGO instrument first. And then you run a workload, you got a profile, and then you are building an image with a, an improved profile. 
Uh, now, Fabio, maybe as part of your demo, you can show this a little bit, uh, the, the comment uh, lines that are yes. relevant there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so that's on, on, on PGO. So it kind of works with the regular Gravian plugin. It just means you have to build the image twice. And the first time you have to give the image a, an example workload. Uh, but note that even without PGO, the performance report is much, much better in this release because of our machine learning based uh, profile inference. So like, uh, as we said earlier, uh, if if there's no profile available, we will use uh, like some machine learning based system uh, to come up with profiles for you, and they might not be exactly matching, but it's it's already you know gives this gives a boost in terms of of throughput. Um, and uh, so the second question is how exactly is this new Gravium uh, or Gravium version licensed? So the license is is uh, it's now linked from our website. So if you if you go to our, our website to the download page, you will see the Gravium free terms and conditions uh, license. It's linked there. Um, it means you're allowed to use uh, this uh, this new version of Gravium uh, for for any kind of use, both production and development. And um, so so there there's like this is this is very uh, very similar analogous to uh, what is the uh, which is the NFTC license, which is the license for the Oracle Java download? Um, for the Oracle Java download, uh, it's it's called um, it's called uh, the NFTC. NFTC, yeah, Oracle No Fee Terms and Conditions license. And here we have just the uh, the Gravium free terms and conditions. So this is this is very similar. And uh, but for the details, you can you can just look at uh, at the website and look at uh, the license text. Okay, do you want to proceed to demos uh, or uh, look at more questions? But they, there's a UPX question. There's a UPX question. I'm not aware of issues with UPX. If there is issues, let me know on the Gravium Slack or or on our GitHub issue list. I'm not aware of issues with UPX. If there are some, we would love to hear them. Okay, and just to like finish with the chart, so we have a comment from Francois, who is our uh, performance engineer. Uh, so he wanted to emphasize that we are measuring tail latency after warm-up completes. So to be fair, I think to the jet mode as well. Okay, uh, let's look at the demos we wanted to show. Yeah, so Fabio, go ahead with the screen share and... Uh... Yeah, I'm oh, already... Let me just enable your yeah. screen. Well, Alina, <laughs> Alina just briefly went over to check the link. Um, yeah, we, we just deployed, redeployed a new design of our website. And uh, yeah, the, the link is uh, still being updated. Uh, the learn more link is currently broken, but this one already links to the, to the license and the, the license is up. So you can go and read it if you... If you if that's your thing, um, yeah. So uh, new website, you can you can get the binaries here. Right. Um, yeah. So one question is: Does the community version uh, have performance improvements? Uh, there is also a community version release, uh, but uh, a lot of the features we are talking about here, like the PGL and the G1 garbage collector, are only in the Oracle Gravium distribution. And uh, but yeah, we, we think with this new with this with this uh, free terms and condition license, we think uh, this. I mean, this should be the obviously like the recommended best version of Gravium to use. And um, you can you will see this uh, also now on our our like uh, website download page. Yes, exactly. So you can go and. Uh, select your download, your platform, and have direct links. You can also get script-friendly URLs, which you may know from Oracle JDK already. So you can go and check this out. And I think the team has done a great job redesigning this website. So let's let's go and do some demos. So I have downloaded um, the release artifact already on my cloud machine. So I, I think it's a simple shape, something like eight CPUs and... Uh, uh, eight cores and 16 gigabyte of RAM. So I downloaded the 17 release here. So these are the artifacts and this is in my path. So um, I run Java version, this should give me, this should tell me, yeah, this is Oracle Grad VM. 
And what's new in this release is that a native image is included. So you no longer need to GU install anything. A native image is also, it's already here. So that's how this works. See, this is GraalVM, um, Oracle GraalVM. And what I've prepared here are two little demos. They work the same way, uh, a Spring app and a Micronaut app. Um, if you look at the code, it's a simple hello world. So this thing has a hello world controller uh, responding with hello GraalVM release from Spring Boot. Right? And so that's, that's all this application does. And um, yeah, I, uh, I've, I've also um, configured my POM so that I can work with PGO. So to come back to the question, yeah, you can do this, what I'm doing here with Maven, you can do the same with Gradle. And I would assume in the future, we are also making it easier uh, to use PGO. So, so far, this is the download, and this is essentially from the template. And then uh, this is also included in the template, but here's uh, where I started to change a couple of things. So I included a configuration uh, for our native build tools. And here I'm saying enable G1, and also I'm, I'm saying use the architecture, the micro architecture of my, of my computer. This is uh, further increasing performance and also a new feature that we're going to talk about in a bit. And then we just move on. So this is the normal build step and I can compile as usual. And then it would use uh, ML in field, so machine learning in field uh, profile guarded optimization, which you would see in the build output. And if we go further, I've created two profiles. So the first profile is my PGO instrument profile, and it extends the configuration from the top. Uh, namely, it says, call, if you create the image, call it demo PGO instrument, and the build arc should be the same as previously, so with G1 and MArch native, uh, but also add PGO instrument. So this is how we create an instrumented image. And to speed things up a little bit, I've already I've already ran a build. So all I need to do is I think I have a build script here. So all I do is now this is the run script. Uh, here's the build script. So I invoke my profile, the PGO instrument profile, and I say okay, use the native uh, plugin and compile. And this gives me the binary. And the binary is in my target directory. So this is the instrument binary. So what I can then do is I can run the binary and I can put some uh, workload on it. And then uh, when I stop the server, I get this magic default iProf file, which is essentially um, the profile gathered for the specific workload. And then uh, I have a second profile, uh, which is the, the, just the PGO profile, so not the PGO instrument profile. And that does the same, but instead of uh, using PGO instrument, it's feeding that profile back in. So this is how uh, I can feed uh, um, these profiles back into the build process to create an optimized version of this image. And that's what I've, that's what I've done here. I've uh, essentially built different images. So the demo image, uh, the demo executable is without PGO, but with G1. Then there is the PGO instrument. This is with instrumentation code. So when I run it and I quit it, I get a profile. And then third, I built a PGO optimized binary, which is this guy here. And then I can, I can run these things. So what I've done is I can, I can run with, uh, uh, I should go into the Spring Boot directory so I can run the JIT version. And that literally just calls Java, jar, and then it runs it on, uh, uh, the, yeah, it runs the jar. And that one started up on this machine uh, in 1.5 seconds. And then I have this little tool here called Hey, uh, which can send web requests. So I can send web requests to this guy, let's say it's just a thousand. So now I, I just sent a thousand requests. And um, sorry, can and I make it a little bit larger? A little bit larger? The, the font, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, I can make the that's font good. a little bit that's larger. Good, that's good. So that's, that, that's what, what you can do. But I can also uh, run the native version with PGO, and that is literally calling just the, the, the target file. And this one starts up in 0.025 seconds. And it can do the same. It, it can do exactly the same. It can also respond to these requests. So for benchmarking purposes, I have used a nifty little tool called PS Record. Um, you can find it online, and it can uh, it's a little Python wrapper that can track memory usage of the process. 
So, um, and what I've done is I've essentially created a plot for a JIT run. And um, what we are seeing here is CPU usage on the left and memory usage on the right over time in seconds. And this is the JIT version. So I've started the app. This is the first red blob is essentially like the JVM starting up. Then it's me switching terminals because I want to send a workload. And then I'm sending a million uh, requests to the server. So this is essentially like, okay, uh, starting the server, waiting for Fabio to press hey, and then we get a million requests and then this thing is done. And this is what this profile looks like. Uh, when I do the same plot for the native uh, use case, I get something like this. So net, let's put them side by side. So the startup has been dramatically decreased, <laughs> reduced. Well, there's, there's very little to do because all of this was done while, you, while, while I was building the image, so I built time, right? And uh, essentially here, this is where I press hey and then send a million requests. So this one uh, responds quicker. So it's done with the million requests sooner, sooner than this guy. And it's also using less CPU and less memory. So note the X's are exactly the same. Right, so um, essentially memory consumption has gone down from a peak of almost 500 megabytes to let's say less than 250 megabytes. And that's with default configuration. So both processes are using the G1GC with the default configuration, which means 25% of those 16 gigabytes in my machine. But regardless, we can of course start tweaking the GC flag and, and uh, change it. Um, the then uh, the native image process will always use fewer memory resources. We'll need to do less garbage collection uh, because we've done lots of optimizations um, at build time that you know can benefit from. Thomas, any questions? Yeah, no, but but it just I mean I mean this was you said it was uh, one million requests, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So so I mean. I mean, this just shows that like native image here with this release, it's no longer just for startup. It's like, even if you serve your million requests, uh, you have, you know, not only the first 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 requests served faster, but you have the first million requests served faster. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I think I think this is this is really uh, like, this is this makes really a big difference here. And uh, yeah, if you can you can you show the the, the diagram? Yeah, uh, yeah. so the, the so pictures? these are this yeah. is the ah oh, you want the diagram? To yeah, go? just the pictures one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah of, course, because, of course. Because one other thing here I think point to make is that like you can see this memory consumption on on the chip side be it's higher, it's substantially higher, and it even has new, even much higher peaks. So so this is kind of underlying our 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 result that like if you have a server where you run multiple programs at the same time, then the native image workload will be far more, uh, far less disruptive to other workloads on the same server. It will create less noise. It will create more predictability. And that's what you can then see in the, in the tail latency numbers. Yes, and that's also something that I wanted to show. So here's the hay output for these processes. So JIT on the left, AOT on the right, uh, so this finished quicker, served it in uh, less than 19 seconds. This is over 20 seconds. Yeah, it's a it's a short running uh, benchmark still, but you can you can see the difference here. It, uh, it it transferred the same amount of data because it is the same process. But this one responded, the JVM responded uh, in most of the cases in under 16 milliseconds, and our native executable in under three milliseconds, which is significant, I would say. And remember, it's the uh, you're using less resources to get uh, to get that. Um, even for latency distribution, we see an improvement. So 99%, it's in 33, and here it's in 27. And this is just for this short uh, running benchmark. But even the request per second, right? So, so the very peak throughput is also higher on native image, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The peak throughput also yeah. is higher. And I mean, it's a short running benchmark, but it serves it's a million, million requests. requests, right? Yeah, yeah, it serves a million requests. So, yeah. so, so this is something where, like, uh, you know, even if you have multi million of requests, it's it's pretty clear that the out of time compilation is here just just giving you advantage on yeah on uh, on the overall efficiency how you run your workload. Yeah. 
And I've done the same experiment. Uh, so just to demonstrate that this not only works for Spring, uh, I've also done it with a Micronaut app. So just to show the code, here's a Hello World controller. It just answers Hello Guardian release from Micronaut. And uh, I can build that in different versions. I can have a demo. I can have a demo PGO binary and a, ben uh, a demo PGO instrument, which I've used to, to create this guy. And I can run them uh, and I can plot everything over time. So again, this is what JIT looks like. And here is what uh, native looks like. Uh, let's put them side by side. And here the difference uh, is uh, it's almost almost similar um, uh, or very, very similar, almost identical. And again, uh, if we look at um, the, the latency and the response time histogram, uh, here, the, uh, the majority of requests were served in 18 milliseconds, whereas here the majority were served in just three milliseconds. Uh, and the benchmark again run over a second faster in native while consuming fewer resources. Okay, are there any questions for um, the, uh, yeah, this part was, of the demo? Uh, there was an interesting question that I think we should answer about Goldium and JDK21. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so not immediately connected to performance, but maybe we want to take this one. So what about Goldium with JDK21? Since things like uh, yeah. Ruby will go GA, right? So what about Yeah, that? no, absolutely. It's a great question. And yeah. so, so while we are releasing today for Java 17 and Java 20, uh, the team is already busy preparing the 21 release as well. Uh, so you can expect the Gravium or Gravium release for Java 21 um, at the same time when Java 21 is uh, released. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think Fabio showed already on, on, on some of the measurements with, with Loom uh, that uh, our, our implementation of virtual threads on native image is actually very efficient. Um, and so, so we also like, you know, Project Loom and Structured Concurrency, and we are making sure that it has a first-class support in 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 the Gra in, in, in Gravium. And I think that release, so Gravium for JDK twenty-one, that will go live in what September? So three months from now, yeah, we'll have, to have a new yeah, release. that's gonna be go live uh, mid of September. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, which Java framework will deliver max performance uh, with Gravium and JDK twenty-one? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, we are all impartial here. I think uh, every we love framework all the frameworks. Has, yeah, we love all the frameworks. Um, so, so there is, uh, you know, there is pros and cons for the different frameworks. Um, I think I think you would want to try it yourself uh, and uh, sort of just trade off some frameworks are maybe smaller uh, and more lightweight, but then they have less features. Uh, some are maybe you know you know have more features, but then they're a little bit more heavy. Um, but uh, yeah, we we're currently here highlighting in our blog uh, the Spring Patkinic numbers, but uh, we will we will publish uh, also benchmarks and example results for other frameworks. Uh, in 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 the upcoming weeks, and uh, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to to work with all the framework vendors to make sure that Gravium continues to deliver the best performance for all of you. Thanks. So that was one question, uh, mm -hmm. and I think the next... how far would you say the GMX yeah. support is? Uh, and yeah, happy you ask this thing. <laughs> demo later on. Uh, do you have a demo ready, Fabio? Or uh... um, well, I we have yeah. better than a demo. We have a guide on our website, I believe, so you can go and try it out yourself. Yes, that is right. There's a there's a new guide uh, for this on the website. So if you go here to the guides, there should be a JMX guide in here. Uh, here you go. Awesome. So this is the new guide. So to answer the question, how far is JMX support? Well, this is the first time we are including JMX support and it's marked as experimental. So please feel free to, to give it a try. Uh, all you need to do is um, use this enable monitoring flag, uh, which should be documented in here. Yep, enable monitoring. And then you add a JVM, a JMX server, and uh, you can also add JVM uh, client if you need it, and other things like JVM stat or heap dumps. And then you can create an executable uh, like this one, like the simple a a a JMX example, which is 
like a, like in, documented in here, then you can run it and then you can open uh, this guy up in Visual VM and interact with it through, uh, for instance, this Bean uh, UI. And it also works with Java Mission Control. Uh, but if something doesn't work, feel free to file issues so that we can fix it in the, in the next release. So yeah, please give this a try, uh, but it's not yet fully supported. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers the question. Okay, and I think that was the last question we had so far. So we can go back to discussing what else is new in this release. Uh, Fabio, let me, yeah, thanks. Okay, so what else is new here? Uh, I believe we stopped here. So we talked about performance and what kind of performance you can get now with this release. Now let's see what else is new. So we briefly mentioned, but just to emphasize what you get in this release is for all VM builds for JDK 17 and JDK 20. You can choose whatever version you want. We do encourage you though to move to JDK 20 because as we announced some time ago, we will be releasing Grawl VM only for the latest Java version in the future. So you might want to move to the latest gradually. And also, as Fabio said and showed in the demo, native image is not included in the Graal VM JDK download. So when you download Graal VM, you have native image included in there. You don't need to install it additionally as a component. And we now also have a stable download URLs that you can use to always download Graal VM from this specific location. And you can use it in your scripts, in your CI CD pipelines, so for example, to get Graal VM for JDK 20. For Linux, this will be a URL where you can get it. And we will publish all of this on our website and in the release blog post so you can get all the downloads and all the URLs from there. Okay, and uh, uh, we again briefly mentioned this and showed this in the demo, but just to mention a few more things that are specific to this release. So we mentioned that there is now new machine learning based profile inference that helps you get even more performance out of the box with native image. And we did measurements on a wide set of benchmarks and we see something around 6% runtime speed up just out of the box. And this is really great. And this is enabled by default. So this is one of the ways how we can get more performance in native image. Also, we talked about this new MARC option that helps you leverage your architecture specific features to get more performance for the native executables. And we now also have new context aware and line optimization that is using a new sampling profiler that is also new in this release. And with this, you can get smaller executable sizes and also increased peak performance. And we also improved loop authorization support for native image, and which brings this brings certain loops on native image in terms of performance on par with JIT. And this is in general a theme of this release and a couple of the past releases that we are trying to make as many workloads as possible show the same performance on native image or even higher than running with JIT. Okay, do we have any more questions? No, I think we can go on then. So what else is new in this release is that we are adding a new feature called native image bundles. And this is a feature that allows you to produce a build bundle out of your application. So let's say at some point in the future, maybe you want to replicate the exact same build. So maybe you want to update or patch your application or you just want to have a way to replicate the build with all the exact arguments and environment variables that you used in the original build. So now it is possible because we added this new option that creates such a build bundle for you that you can use in the future to reproduce this build. And let me actually show you such a build bundle in action. So what I have here is a mod application. So this is my Micronaut app and it clearly runs a web server and exposes an endpoint and which it returns a random conference name from this list. So this is a pretty basic Micronaut uh, example application that works with GraalVM. So let me build this app. And as I will build it, I will show you what is interesting about this app and about its POM XML in particular. So packaging equals native image and package. So this will now build my app. And as we are doing so, let's look at POMXML. 
And the interesting part for me here is this native Maven plugin. So this is the Maven plugin that is coming from GraalVM Build Tools. And this is something we always recommend that you use. So either Maven or Gradle plugins from GraalVM Build Tools. And this will help you build and test and package your applications as GraalVM native images. And what's really great, this is also included in many frameworks out of the box. So as you build and generate your project for the first time, frameworks will help you include build tools in your project. And the interesting part for me here is this configuration section. And this is the part where I can supply different arguments to my build. So if I want to pass a certain argument to my build, such as in this example, we are creating a bundle, but this can be also the place where I would do PGO, G1, or I can do a quick build mode that will produce a net executable faster for me just for development purposes. So this is the part of my PomXML where I will supply all those different arguments for my native image. And here I'm passing this bundle create argument, then we'll produce this build bundle that I can use next to recreate my build. So uh, let's look at our build output. And I don't know, uh, Fabio, did you mention this, but we also did several changes to the build output itself. Yeah, I was I was going to show this in, in my second okay, demo. I will, I will let you show it and I will yeah. skip part of here. Shall we get Thomas back in? I what hear happened? his uh, browser wasn't happy, so. Oh, okay. Let me stop sharing for a <laughs> sec because I saw beeping, but I didn't see what that was. There he is. <laughs> I'm back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I thought oh. that's going to happen to me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry, let me go back. Um, uh, yeah, let me share my entire screen. Let's go. So the very moment when my app got built, we uh, stopped there for a sec, but it's all fine. So I have my uh, file, I have my build finished now, and I see a number of things here. So first of all, I get my native executable as I always would. But in addition to that, I also have this default name, and that is my native image bundle. Uh, so let's take a look at it and let me see if I can move this somewhere. Okay, good enough. Uh, so let me clear this and let's look at this bundle that we now have. So it's in target. And here now I also have this default.mid file. So let's look at what's inside of this file. So target default.mid. And what's inside is basically a bunch of jars that will help me recreate my build along with some information about my build. So environment, build variables, etc. And this also includes my uh, native executable itself. But it could be the case that I want to package this as a bundle so I can reuse it in the future, but maybe I don't want to recreate the, maybe I don't want to create native executable right now at all. So for that, this includes one more option that I can use here. So if I add one more argument here, uh, that will be dry run. And I save this and I create recreate my build here again. So this will now package my application super fast. And what this did is created my native uh, bundle again. But now it's significantly smaller. And when we look inside of it, we will see the following. So target default.nip. And we see again jars and all the info that I need to recreate the build, but now it doesn't uh, include the native executable anymore. So the way those bundles could be helpful is, for example, I can use this bundle to create my build on a different machine. Maybe I don't want to build native image on my developer machine, so maybe I want to build on a more powerful one somewhere in CI CD, or maybe even I want to use this to build my native executable on a different platform. And there are more ways where this can be used. So you can also combine it with using PGO for better performance, and you can include in the bundle profile information, and then out of it, build a native executable that is uh, built with PGO in mind, and that provides a better peak performance. So this is new in this release. Also give it a try and let us know what you think. It's also pretty cool to create reproducers. Even if your build fails, you can just package everything, send it to uh, a colleague or put this up on our issue tracker uh, or like hand it into a support ticket. And then uh, we can reproduce the build and see what's actually going on and uh, either fix uh, provide a fix for you or fix something within uh, GraalVM. Right. Thanks. And we actually have one more 
question. I'm wondering if one of you bring it on the screen because I'm screen sharing my VS Code here. But there is a question about how does the machine learning stuff actually work practically? Well, there's more details on how this works in the release blog post, but uh, it's on device. So it's not talking to some Oracle or some other cloud vendor. Uh, it's a pre-trained model that we're using, but uh, I don't I don't have all the details in my head. Uh, there's, there's some details in the release blog post, and I'm sure we're going to uh, explain more in a follow-up blog post soon. Um, but no, it's not sending anything uh, somewhere else. And we have just lost Thomas again. Oh, wow. Let me again. <laughs> I mean, what is happening? <laughs> okay, let's. Okay, Thomas is back on. Let us just bring him on stage. Welcome back, Thomas. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, you covered the question, but I think it's a good idea that we should probably write a blog post about this machine learning profile inference because indeed it's very interesting and we can share how it works and share some more performance results. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think the the uh, like Voyin and 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 is going to be very happy to write such a blog post. Uh, there, there's there's quite a lot of research, and yeah, we're collaborating there with uh, with university um, in in Belgrade uh, that uh, helps us develop this uh, this this system there. And uh, really, shout out to the developers there that that uh, they created that feature. It's it's um, it's very promising to us. Right, thanks. Uh, let's go back to this release and what else is new. There's a lot of stuff, so buckle up. Uh, so we talked about build bundles. What else is new here is that we now also have build reports, which are very cool and they look like this. So now you can pass one more option to produce such a build report that will give information about this build. As you can see here, this is a summary. So it will talk about, uh, it will share information about environment where your image was built, uh, share some results of the analysis that Native Image did as it was building your application and show some more information such as uh, code area and in particular uh, code area breakdown by packages and classes. It will show information on image heap and also as bomb and also i think fabio was it you who was working on this involved working in this so maybe yeah i, I helped a little bit on yeah i helped a little bit on this so this uh, this tool helps you uh, figure out what's inside of your executable and what happened uh, during build time so there's this code area and you, uh, with a sunburst graph you can drill down in different packages and uh, something that i wanted to point out while alina was building the bundle but yeah it's it's too late now uh, so the build output also shows you the jars and how they um, how they contribute to the file size so you know exactly uh, which dependency which one of your Maven or Gradle dependencies is contrib contributing how much, but using these reports, you can actually see all, all the way down to the class level, like how many classes per package and what, what they're contributing, like how many methods they're contributing and how much that is in terms of uh, bytecode size or machine code size. There's also, and maybe you can see this in the screenshot, uh, we can't click on this right now, but there's an image heap breakdown which shows you what's in the image heap. So in addition to the code, which is in the binary, we also make a snapshot of, um, of the, the image heap that was created at build time to make a, a, a startup really fast, but you can also see what's in there. So you can check that there are no test classes or no instances of, of uh, test classes or test objects in there, for example. And maybe there's also, maybe something has gone wrong at build time and you're wondering why is your, why is your binary so big? And then you can either like find um, the, the problems in your code area or in the image heap area. And the last tab includes the software bill of material that Alina uh, briefly mentioned. You can download it in there. Uh, it's actually like all the SBOM information is actually embedded in the binary. So you can also always get the SBOM out of a binary later on, even like after it was deployed. And it will tell you exactly like about the dependencies and the version that are in that have contributed to this executable and you can use this with uh, software uh, uh, security uh, scanners to make sure that it's free uh, from certain vulnerabilities. Yeah, and so, so this, this just showcases the power here of actually uh, having a full static analysis and a full view of the application uh, when you build an image. And we would really encourage you, like if you, if you, if you build any images to try this out 
and uh, give us then also some feedback on whether the reports you got for your application uh, are helpful to you and uh, you know maybe what what we should improve in terms of additional output um, this is this is just the first version of this build output uh, but uh, we we really think we will um, we will continue in this direction uh, to increase the amount of information we show you about your application uh, that is built into the image. And, and this is very powerful. It's, it's also powerful for, for potential security reasons because you can be sure that whatever is in that build report is the only thing that gets deployed and it's not possible that other code is loaded. So this is why the SBOM feature is, 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 is very interesting there uh, because you can verify that whatever you deploy here is actually what you what is allowed to be deployed, right? Yeah, and it's an experimental feature, so please give it a try. Let us know if something breaks. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, very soon, we'll also uh, provide you with uh, more tools in here that, for example, allow you to understand why something is in your executable. Uh, that is a bit tricky, but uh, we're experimenting with some approaches and that will hopefully uh, be very useful not only to us uh, or people working on the JDK, but also to our users and mm -hmm. our framework maintainers. Yeah, so one question is, is the build report only for E? So the build report is part of the features that are released now under this Oracle Gradium distribution. So uh, you can use them, you can use the distribution for free. And uh, and this is, uh, so, so you don't... Uh, uh, you, you don't need any license or any click through or whatnot uh, to use this uh, distribution. And uh, but yeah, you, you they are only included in the Oracle Gradium distribution. But I think it's pretty cool that somebody actually already tried this feature as we are um, releasing Graal VM right now, right? So they actually already tried and asked the question. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's move on then. So AWT on Linux, this is, we are still talking about native image. So AWT now also works on Linux. You can give it a try. And now that we have Windows and Linux working, the next goal will be to make it work on uh, Mac OS as well. And I think this will enable way more applications to also work just out of the box with native image on Linux as well. And I believe we have a demo for uh, yes. AWT as well. Yeah, so the, uh, previously this used to work, uh, like AWT used to work uh, with static linking. Uh, so you're linking all the AWT key native code into the executable and thus making it bigger and also yeah, uh, yeah, it's a self-contained binary. So uh, in this release, we are flipping a switch and turning on dynamic linking on Linux, uh, which we also already have on Windows. And we are hopefully soon also bringing to macOS to complete uh, the AWT support. And that means you, in addition to your binary, you also get additional libraries, uh, uh, shim libraries, like little dummy libraries that we need uh, to make things work, but also actual the original uh, lib AWT libraries from, from, the, from the JDK. Um, and that allows you to, for example, switch between headless and headful without having to recompile. So um, previously uh, in uh, different talks and on Twitter, uh, we've talked about this, uh, we've used this game of life demo. Um, that uh, demonstrates Project Loom because it's it's using virtual threads. And I'm going to use this one again. Um, but this time, um, there's only two files that I've changed, uh, which is uh, the POM, and I created this build file. And apart from this, I'm still on Elliot's uh, commit, uh, which is the latest commit on his uh, repository on GitHub. So I haven't changed a single line of Java code. I haven't. I only touched the the POM XML and I added this build script because I'm lazy and I don't want to like do all the setup. But essentially, I'm just invoking Maven with uh, P native, so the native profile. I'm running with the agent. I'm skipping the test to speed up the demo, and I use the I use package here. Um, and um, yeah, so in the POM, and that's where this is interesting. Uh, I have bumped. The Java version, uh, maybe I should open the diff actually. So I have bumped the Java version from 19 to 20 because this Gra release comes with 
the 20 and I've created uh, a profile, a native, the native profile. So this is all I need to do to add the native build tools if I'm not using uh, some framework that already pulls them in, like uh, Micronaut, uh, Quark, um, uh, no, not Quarkus, but Micronaut, Spring, and Halidon. They're pulling those in. And then uh, I can specify the version uh, of this um, thing, and I can say, OK, I want this to run as part of the package uh, step. And here, this hopefully looks familiar. So this is the name of the main class. And here we're putting in some build arguments. So I'm running with enable preview to unlock, uh, to unlock those virtual threads. I'm running with this link at build time um, uh, flag, which, makes, which just makes sure that all classes that I need are actually there when I build it. And uh, if, I, if, I, if I had forgotten about enable preview, the classes that are using virtual threads are not there. And then I would get an error at build time, which, which is exactly what I want. So that's why I'm putting the flag in here. I'm again using G1 and I'm using the native architecture of my CPU uh, to optimize for performance. And then the rest is for setting up this Java agent. So you can look all of this up in the... Um, uh, in the Maven and, and Gradle documentation of our native build tools. So in the Java agent run, which is part of the test phase, uh, I again enable preview, I set up the class path correctly, and then I specify the main. So it's, it's no dark magic here. It's really, really simple. So um, let's see what happens. Um, so I haven't changed a single, single thing uh, uh, except the uh, POM XML. So when I run this, we'll kick off the build. And then eventually it will run with the agent. So this is the demo running on uh, the JVM with our agent. So um, this has already opened a window and started the demo. And we're looking at the game of life uh, visualization. And each of these cells are actually powered and calculated by a virtual thread each. And uh, this is using AWT. It's even using Swing. Um, to do all of this, um, and the agent, this our Java agent, the tracing agent, has intercepted reflective calls, calls to resources, uh, Java resources, um, and JNI calls, which are very important for AWT and to make all that work. And uh, it's recording all of this, so I could, if there was a menu, I could click through menus, and I could also check check a few other things or run my UI test suite. Right, to collect uh, to collect all the metadata that is actually needed. But here, there's not much I can do apart from looking at this nice demo, and then I can close it. And then it will continue. And what it is doing here is um, it is building with native image on the Gravi MJDK20 and um, using this jar on the class path. Um, it's using this as the name for the executable, using this as the main class. Uh, this, these are my arguments that I put in here, the additional arguments. So an enable preview, G1, GC. And then it has also added this flag, which tells native image in this directory. Uh, please take a look at this directory. Uh, this is where uh, I've put all the metadata that I collected. So it's on a target native agent output. Yeah, th these are the files. So this is JNI config. So this was all generated uh, for us by the tracing agent, right? And that's, uh, that's already a lot of code for such a simple demo, but there you go. This is how complex it is to support AWT. Um, just the JNI part. Uh, fortunately, like something like resources should be relatively small. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, so then it's, it's actually building. So it's building all of this right now. And here we can see machine learning in action. So this is using uh, machine learning interference uh, to allow to use PGO without having to do anything using our pre-trained model. Um, it's optimizing for, uh, it's using the, the second, the O2 optimization level um, and this is, we are targeting the native architecture of my machine. You can click on everything that has an underline uh, if your terminal supports that and read the docs. And if we're moving on, uh, we can see lots of information. Um, the, the binary or the, yeah, the binary is something like almost 60 megabytes. And here we get a breakdown of all of our dependencies. So Java desktop has contributed something like 13 megabytes just in terms of code, right? So just the code area, which is 36 megabytes in, uh, in total, 
Um, yeah, just that area uh, has 13 megabytes of Java desktop in here. And XML is also being pulled in. Uh, I don't know where from, from the top of my head, but this is the actual jar from the application. This is the actual demo code. So only 150 kilobytes uh, were pulled in. And there's also lots of objects which have been allocated uh, in the object in the image heap um, to make all of this work. And here's another new thing uh, that we've added. It's a recommendation section. So based on what the static analysis has found and what the native image build process has seen in your application, we make uh, we make re recommendations. So here we're re also recommending a PGO um, because this is just using the ML inferred uh, profile. But uh, if you're doing user pro provided PGO, so if you're creating your own profile, you're likely to improve, uh, very likely to improve your throughput. Um, this is something I noticed this morning. Um, so apparently a native image just failed to detect that um, we are putting, a, that we are feeding in uh, metadata uh, for AWT. And it's, I, I checked and it's because this AWT app is so simple, it doesn't call a method reflect, reflectively. So, and that's exactly the check that we're doing. We're checking whether some AWT method is uh, called reflectively and there is no such method in this example because everything, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not needed for the demo. Um, we make, uh, yeah, we have predicted that, um, yeah, if you, if you want your memory usage to be more predictable and improved, you can set your heap. And uh, if the build is a bit too slow on your machine, also consider using um, the quick build mode um, especially during development, uh, which speeds up the compilation phase. So let's take a look. It compiled in 50 seconds. So with quick build, it would be something like, I don't know, 20 seconds, maybe uh, less than half uh, on my machine. Yeah, and also try out those build reports. Uh, this is the flag. Uh, and uh, yeah, what I, what I also want to point out here is that uh, the, the statistics here, the statistics about the res uh, resource usage on my machine, um, they should show you uh, a, lo uh, a lot fewer GCs and lower PCASS. So PCASS is the memory, essentially uh, the used memory report as reported, uh, the, the memory used by this process as reported by the operating system. And native image has lots of tweaks in this release. So it, it also looks at other running processes on your machine and, uh, and tries to not interfere with them and that the operating system um, um, swap them out. So your machine, they should remain uh, more responsive. And then eventually, yeah, we get the list of artifacts. Um, these include uh, libAWT and also I think the headless version. Yeah, this is the headless version. And then, yeah, this took a minute, um, 38 seconds. So let's start the demo. Uh, this is the demo. This is the native version. And it does exactly the same. So, um, yeah, except, that it's, except that it's fast immediately. <laughs> yes, it's fast immediately. And it's it's really small. All you have to ship is this. You don't need to ship a whole JDK. Okay. Right. I'm wondering if we, yeah, this looks great. I'm wondering if we should talk about other updates in this release because we are getting over mm -hmm. one hour. Yeah. I'm wondering yeah, if so we let's, uh, let's oh. probably go through the, the other things. <laughs> Alina, what else? What else we have in this yeah, list? Let's see what else is there. Okay, we are, we are getting there, so not that much more left, but you know, we are slowly getting there. Uh, so let's see. Uh, where were we? Uh, AWT on Linux. We were here. All good. So a few things about developer experience improvements in native image in this release. Uh, they are the following. So we improved memory footprint of the native image build process, and Fabio briefly mentioned this in his demo. But just to emphasize what changed there, so the native image will take a look at the memory that is available at the moment in your machine. So make sure that it will not load your machine too much. Also look at other processes that are running at the moment and make sure that it takes up reasonable amount of memory out of what is available. That is one change. But another change is that we also increase the uh, limit of the memory that can be used by native image. So if you are building a really large application on a really good machine, it will build faster because it can now use more memory for such large applications. And we had some Windows questions, I think from Simon. So good news here is that native image will now set up build environments on Windows automatically. So the experience specifically around getting started on Windows just got better for native image users. 
and we have more JFR events available in this release. So with every release, if you could notice, we are adding more and more events. So this is really great. And some time ago, we also had a blog post that you can now use native image on RISC-V architecture through our LLVM backend. So uh, I believe this is still experimental, but you can check on our medium for instructions how to make it happen and you can try it yourself. And JMX, what you also had a question about. So uh, yes, there is now experimental management uh, for OJMX supported. So not supported, experimental. And this was also a community contribution. So you can check out our guide to try it out yourself. Okay, uh, let's see. No questions yet. There were some comments. Yeah, about let's add it. One. Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Okay, ahead. let's go ahead. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to mention is these and frameworks that are tested to be working with Nancy Image out of the box. So maybe you noticed this page on our website before. Maybe you didn't. But this page is for those cases when you're wondering that if you want to use a site of library or framework, uh, can you know that it works with Nancy Image? out of the box. So uh, this page on our website, you can find it by this ready for native image name. And it shows you a list of libraries and frameworks that are tested and proven to be working with native image out of the box. So either they ship configuration for native image within the library itself, or they are providing this configuration in the Grohl VM reachability repository. And this is a very nice list. I think it contains more than 150 different libraries that you can use with native image right now. So if you've been wondering if your project and the dependencies you are using will work with native image, this is the place where you can verify that indeed all of them are working with native image. And a few more uh, updates in Grow VM in general, so related to native image, uh, just the two updates, but very interesting ones about the Grow VM JDK and compiler. So you can now use ZGC with Grow VM JDK, so in the JIT mode. And you can pass this flag to enable it. So we think this is very interesting. And we are looking forward to your uh, performance uh, results and, in general, your feedback on this feature. And another thing, uh, so you might have used before Ideal Graph Visualizer IGV. So this is for uh, kind of advanced usage for when you want to explore certain uh, compilation issues or just want to have a better understanding of compilation that is happening in the new application. So this is where you would use IGV, and it's also now open source. So those are great updates, and those are related to the compiler. And we want to give some credit to the community contributions in this release. So there were many, many contributions to the Grow VM reachability repo. And that is the centralized repo where users can share and then reuse configuration for native image. This is making libraries that don't ship configuration for native image yet available for native image uh, out of the box. And we have a lot of community contributions there, which is very nice. So thanks for all of them. And what is also great, you can use this Grow VM reachability repository through our native build tools. So you can enable access to this repo and what our Maven and Gradle plugins will do. They will look at your application and they will try to find configuration for your dependencies in this repo automatically. And uh, some other contributions are that, as always, together with Red Hat, we added several things, such as, for example, more JFR events, improved debugging on Windows, and JMAX support, which we talked about. It was also uh, contributed, and we worked on it together with Red Hat. And uh, yeah, also thanks to you all for your feedback and performance measurements and suggestions that also went into this release. And a few words about what new in Grow VM and projects that are related to Grow VM. So some time ago, we published this uh, Grow VM community survey, and that is the place where you can find uh, uh, information on how Grow VM is currently being used, what features are the most uh, requested by our audience, uh, what libraries and tools they are using, which frameworks they are using most, and just to get an idea of what is happening in the Grow VM ecosystem and where it will be moving in the future. And also several frameworks such as Spring Boot, Quarkus, and Micronaut released new major versions uh, that are working also with Grow VM native image out of the box. Uh, what is also we've seen also posts from the Azure team of how they now have functionality to monitor uh, Spring Boot applications that are compiled with Grow VM native image on Azure App Insights. And uh, I want to point out this thing because it's very interesting. So uh, there is this performance study 
uh, I cannot click from here. So there is a performance study from the community on performance of raw VM as JIT versus OpenJDK C2. And that I think is also very interesting. And we saw some experiments of compiling Kafka nodes to native with raw VM and native image, and then they start very fast and use very little memory. So this is also something you can try doing yourself. Okay, uh, I think we are getting to the end of at least what I wanted to show here. So we can give a few more minutes maybe for questions. And in the meantime, I wanted to show that we published our release blog posts. So if you go to Medium Girl VM, um, since we have so many changes in this release, we will have actually two blog posts, not one as usually. So this one will be a uh, focus on JDK and native image. And also we'll talk a bit about this new Oracle GraalVM distribution. And now we have one more blog post for GraalVM languages and Truffle. So here you can find all the updates about GraalPy, about Truffle Ruby, about Truffle itself, GraalJS, Node.js, all kinds of things. And for JDK and native image, this one is uh, what you are looking for. Okay. Any questions yet? Well, there have been a lot of questions so far, but uh, are there more questions? <laughs> but yeah, we are already a little bit over time. Uh, okay, so let's give maybe I don't know, two more minutes for any yeah, yeah, questions. Uh, let's see. And then uh, if not, we can wrap it up and uh, yeah, go announce it. Yeah, the native image for shell applications is great, actually. It's not just for microservices, also for shell apps. And uh, one thing to note here is that uh, in this release, if you're going to compile Hello World as Oracle GraalVM, you will see that uh, the size of this binary is much, much lower than before. Uh, so, so we are, I mean, you're still not in the, in the size of a C binary, but, uh, but we are getting much lower than before, also for, for small apps or, or small terminal apps. Okay, then I guess right. we are out of questions and yes. we can give people the chance to go and try what we showed to them so far. Yes, and the details the details on uh, that we talked about today are all now in the release uh, blog post. Uh, uh, please help us share the news, uh, share the blog post uh, and uh, help us spread the news also to others in the Java community. Uh, yeah, because... Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, all. Like we are missing you here. I mean, there's still a spot here on the right <laughs> bottom. Oh. Right? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, cool, excellent. Yes, yeah, thank you, everybody, and thank, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Alina and Fabio, for a great stream here. And uh, we're looking forward to then uh, our next release stream, which is going to be for the Java 21 latest. That's three months. <laughs> uh, in, in less than three months, yeah, actually. Uh, so yeah, we will. Um, we had a little bit of a of a, of a time where we, there was uh, not major Graalvm releases, and as you can see, it was now a lot at the same time. Uh, but now we will go back to uh, to more regular schedule. Specifically, the schedule will be like there will be now a new Graalvm release. And whenever there's a new Java release, uh, which means every six months, the next one for Java 21. Cool. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you. See you next.